This is important because it helps your code run faster. You see, the advantage of VBA is that it can keep a lot of things in memory and it works through that memory to give you the outcome that you want. And we work with VBA's memory when we use variables. By default, VBA assigns the data type called variant and variant means that it changes depending on the data type. So if that data type is text, number, date, and so on. It's going to allocate around 16 bytes of memory if it's a number and a little bit more if it's text, so if it's string. Now, if you know that the variable you're going to be using is a small number, because let's say you're just capturing page numbers, for example, then you can declare that variable as byte. Guess how much memory space a byte takes? One byte, right? So that's one versus 16. And that's a big difference, which becomes obvious on the bigger macros, the more complex, longer macros. And the other important thing to know is that each data type has a range. So let me show you what I mean with that. And first, let's take a look at the common data types. I've ordered them by popularity based on my own code. You can see that the smaller the memory space used, the smaller the range here. So for example, a byte has a range from 0 to 255. So now let's imagine that that report you were making has actually 300 pages. And you want to keep that number inside the variable that you've already declared as byte. You're going to run into a problem. And that problem is going to be a VBA error because it can't handle that data type. It can't put in that 300 or it can't put in any number above 255 in this variable. So instead of using byte in this case, you could use integer, which also takes up a lot less space, just two bytes compared to the 16 bytes for variant. If you are looping through a lot of rows, you're on the safe side to use long, right? Because that has a really big data range which can handle the number of rows in Excel, right? So be careful, don't declare them as integer if you think that you could have data that goes past this number of rows. Boolean uses two bytes of memory. Double is good for declaring percentages or if you're doing calculations that require high precision. String is for text. Object is for things like declaring ranges. So if you want to declare a cell as a range or a sheet as a worksheet, or if you're declaring workbooks in variables, you'll need an object data type. Now variant can come in handy as well because you could run into a case that you have a variable that could be Boolean, but it could also keep nothing inside. Right? So if it's really changing between different data types, it makes sense to declare it as variant. Declaring variables basically means that you give VBA a heads up that it needs to free up some memory space for your variables, which will in most cases be less than the default. We use the dim keyword before the variable. The names that you give to variables is really up to you. But special naming rules apply. So for example, you can't have spaces, so use underscore instead. You can't start with a number. You can't use a dot or exclamation mark or other obvious symbols like the at sign or the dollar or and and so on. Also, try to come up with a nickname that's kind of short and as obvious as you can get. So in this case, I'm declaring the my text variable as a string data type, so basically as text. What some programmers like to do is to follow a naming convention. And a common naming convention is to use the initials of the data type in your variable. So for example, if something is an integer number, they would put int before the variable or just i before the variable. And in this case, if this is my text is string, I would put str my text. I personally don't follow any special rules except some rules that I've created for myself along the way, such as for sheets, I would use sh before the name. For user forms, I also put an initial before that indicates to me what type of control I'm referring to in that user form. Other than that, I've left my options open for picking a name.
So it's really up to you, pick the method that you can relate with most. But let's say I'm defining last row as long, okay? Because it could be a big number. I have a lot of rows in Excel, so I'm gonna define it as long. If I didn't put anything here, it's automatically defined as variant, okay? Which takes up more space than defining it as long. Now I want to assign the number of rows to this variable. Officially, you do this with the let statement. You would say let last row equal, now I'm just gonna do rows.count. So that's the number of rows in my Excel worksheet, right? So this let statement is something that you might not have seen in other projects. That's because it's optional and people don't use it. But in reality, what you're doing is you're letting this last row equals that, but you don't need it. So you're not gonna see it in my code either. I leave it out, okay? But just so that you know what it is in case you see it in other code that you have to work with. Variables don't just hold data and string types. They can also hold objects. Common objects are, for example, the workbook object, worksheet, or the range object. The way you declare them is like this. To assign variables to objects, you need something and you need the set statement, right? So new sheet equals active sheet would give you a problem. You have to say set new sheet equals active sheet. Okay, and this is something that I forgot a lot at the beginning. I still forget sometimes when I'm writing the code, but the way I remember it is the moment you notice that you've declared something that's not a string, that's not long, that's not integer, it looks like it's an object because it's a workbook, worksheet, or a range, you need set. If not, you get an error. I'm gonna show you the type of error you get. So whenever you see that, just remember, you've probably forgotten the set keyword. This tutorial is a part of my Excel VBA course. If you're interested to find out more, check out the descriptions below the video. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And for more videos like this one, why not subscribe to this channel so that you can get updates when they come out.